It's a very wonderful morning right here in Nairobi. This is K24 Alpha Jimmy, the number one breakfast show in the 254. And guess what, guys? Mm -hmm. It's Friday! Finally! Woo! A big what? What? <laughs> Oh, oh man. yes, it's ah, so it. good <laughs> to finally see this week come to an end. My name is Sarah Danu I'm Jeff Mota, and this weekend is one of those mixed feelings for me because, okay, looking forward to the biggest World Cup action happening, mm -hmm. and then you realize when Monday comes, it's over. What do you look forward to? As in, what is life? We have our men back. What is life? <laughs> Yes, and that too. <laughs> so let me oh, have the word to the <laughs> Because <laughs> I've just been struggling with that. Because the times there have been these breaks, yeah. you know, like two-day breaks, yeah, yeah. you all see your boys. You just don't know, like, okay, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, to fanye, you know, you're just all confused. And now it's going to be like that for the next four years. So. We are back Gosh. to normal programming. Happy back Friday to, to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Shio Marioki. And actually, it raised that to someone like <laughs> World Cup is over. He was like, for me, Lawan isn't. I was like, <laughs> can we win? Can we live? Anyway, it is Hangout Friday. And in the building, we have uh, the biggest mix master himself, DJ Ace. V DJ Ace is in the building. It's going to be absolutely crazy yes. on the decks, you know. Uh, the litness is going to be televised right here on the show. Also, um, the boys stop by Poonet. Woohoo! They yes. come through. Hey. Finally. Finally, man. Hey. You saw yes. them back they together again. Know. What are you? How are you? I? Right Should here. I? Yes, I feel like, I, I feel yes. like we're doing something. <laughs> I feel like that might be an obscene gesture. I'm not sure, but you'll have to ask them what that means. Absolutely. What this means. What this is. <laughs> I like it though. I think it's swag. Whatever it is. Like, why, why are you smelling of okay? <laughs> we shall also be talking matters Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards. We yes. have Nice One Jerry in the building. If you don't know Nice One Jerry, she's the one who's done Auntie Boss. Uh, yes. Yes. So and she'll she's be like two about. totally different people yes. Yes. when you meet her in person. Yes, yes. And I wow. love this girl. So she'll be right here to tell us about her uh, nomination and how you guys can vote for her. Okay. Yay. So you can see the show is absolutely lit. One thing that usually isn't lit is your roads. No, your roads are just usually a mess. Yes. But right here we make sure we sort you out she is going to be giving you that next right on alpha jiri let's get it started All right, it is Friday, which pretty much means that maybe we just behave a little more on the roads. But let's just see if the situation on the roads at this early hour of the morning can be a pointer as to how the rest of the day will progress. As usual, let's start off uh, with Mombasa Road. Um, that's always a good place to start. Let's head on all the way down to uh, Cabana's area and beyond, see what that looks like. As you can see, traffic has started to build up almost at, uh, from the airport junction, quite busy heading to the city Cabana's area and past that into uh, the Ole Sereni Parkside Towers area. But past that, Traffic seems to be moving smoothly up until the Nyayo Stadium roundabout, where again, traffic has started to uh, build up, but not as much as we are accustomed to seeing. This is great news, good tidings. All right, let's head on down to Langata Road, starting off from the Southern Bypass. Things look good heading into Timor uh, roundabout there. Bagathi Way, flowing smoothly up until the City Motorway roundabout. Ngong Road oh, looks good all the way from um, the junction area, all the way down to City Motorway roundabout. Um, Valley Road looks good, joining Kenyatta Avenue down towards the GPO area. Now let's go to the places that might not look so good this early morning, and that is Jogor Road, which is already quite busy as we head into the city stadium roundabout, and past that into downtown Nairobi on Landis Road, things are not looking good at all there. Okay, finally, as usual, let's uh, finish up on Sika Road, see what that looks like. And weird, it actually doesn't look too bad. It, there's only that spot of traffic at all stops. But after that, heading down into the Pangani area, things are not looking terrible at all. All right, that is your traffic situation. As at um, five minutes uh, past six right now, though, Jeff Mote and uh, the big E, Eli Gita, will take you through the Friday papers. Uh, welcome, of course, it's time to go through the big stories of the day as we jump into the weekend. It's time for your newspaper review right here on Alpha Jiri. I'm joined by, as always, if it's Friday, you know who it is, the Big E, <laughs> El Gitao. Hi, Big J. Karibu sana. Santi sana. Um, I told you uh, once we reconvene, 
this Friday. <laughs> we'll know who the true champions of the World Cup are. <laughs> Clearly, it is not your Samba boys. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> okay, and, and it's not your England. It was never my England. <laughs> Senegal left a long time ago. Wait, the only person we know in this studio who's an English fan is one of the cameramen called Clint. <laughs> He's the only person I know in this place who's an English fan. Jeff, you told me off air that you are supporting are England. Are you serious? Yeah. So this is how politicians feel when they're misquoted. I tell you. This is how they feel. Yes. My community has been targeted. <laughs> Let's get into the big stories of the day then. Uh, start off with the people daily. The front page... Um, it's a story that is just brings into focus the stark contrast that's there. On one hand, you're talking about a sugar scandal, millions of tons of sugar imported illegally into the country. On the other side, your very own sugar industry is on its knees. Yes. Deathbed. In fact, that's um, what's happening here. Why Mumias is on its deathbed? It's sad. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's the same country. After a decade of poor management and, and lost funds and everything, now we are staring at Mumias being closed down for good. And let's not forget uh, a couple of government bailouts down the line. Yes. Trying just to bring it back to life. But people wonder, okay, fine, what isn't working? You've been given money, your debts have been taken care of. There's clearly a demand for sugar. Yeah. You, you can't say that they produce sugar and it's just sitting on the shelves. Yes. So there's clearly a demand for sugar. There is. Why is the industry... And this is a, a, a peculiar case to that sugar belt region. Mm. So many sugar companies suffering the same fate. Yes. Probably this one the most uh, at the moment. But why is Mumia's on its deathbed. It's gotten everything it needs to get back up and run. Yes. A myriad of issues have been raised, eh? including poor management, fraud, tax mm -hmm. evasion, allegations, you know. And uh, I, I believe it was in yesterday's newspaper on, on PD mm -hmm. uh, that a former governor, uh, former Nairobi governor, right. Ivan Skidero, mm. was being dragged into all the, these wars of the mm -hmm. Mumia Sugar Company. And, uh, you know, Mumia was the biggest a uh, uh, sugar mill in this country. It was crushing over 350,000 tons mm -hmm. of sugar mm -hmm. as compared to 600,000 uh, tons of sugar across board in the other uh, uh, government-owned millers. Mm -hmm. So when we, 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 we try to fathom that Mumia's, Mumia's sugar milling company is coming down, is going down, you know, this is going to put so many uh, uh, lives at misery. You know, th the thousands of farmers in the, in the Western Sugar Belt, mm -hmm. they are going to suffer. And, uh, the, you know, the thousands of employees down there is going just to add misery on them. Mm -hmm. And this, this is very sad, Jeff. It's, it's a very sad story. And even yes. at this point, um, one must ask themselves, um, what's the way forward? What's the recourse? Because even when it comes to, okay, fine, giving them a government bailout, they've gone down that road. Yes. And yet we still find ourselves here. Yes, a lot of millions have been pumped into this. Uh, state corporations, in, including Mumias. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we've seen after that, uh, no one is accountable of, th of these monies that mm -hmm. have been pumped by the government to, you know, to revive their, their productivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, th the buck stops somewhere, and we ought to know. It's, it's, it's a really sad story on that one, of course, and we'll get uh, more details of uh, that. And if at all, um, it can be salvaged from its deathbed. Yes. That's going to be the The details story. are on page 15, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a massive, massive scandal that's happening at Mumias. Okay, you can get uh, that, of course, uh, like you said, uh, on the 15th page of uh, the PD. Still on the front page, Ministry Malls exclusively day schools. Uh, government talking with the idea of doing away with boarding institutions, especially coming off um, the, the whole unrest that has happened in the region. Talking yes. about more than 40 schools uh, being closed since the year began because of unrest in different pockets in the country. Yeah. And even as they try to figure out what's going on there, they've already uh, read the riot act to the students. They've been told that now moving forward, whatever you do, even if you're a minor, you're going to carry that record with you for the rest of your life. Yes. But now they're thinking about even broader measures, just like scrapping the whole boarding system and keeping all secondary schools as day schools. You know, the feeling is that uh, parents have exclusively dedicated their parenting role mm -hmm. to teachers. And... Uh, that's why maybe the ministry and maybe other stakeholders are of the opinion that if, if uh, we, 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 we had a lot of day schools other than boarding schools, maybe mm -hmm. the parents would be uh, in a position to take care of their children and teach them some manners. Because the, the unrest that we've seen throughout, I think, for the last two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, students touching their, their, their schools and, uh, and all that, uh, some feel like it's a parenting issue. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it, so pursuing that route... Uh, seems viable by, you know, the concerned uh, departments. But again, is it going really to be effective? Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we can't have like a, uh, all, all, you know, all the students, they are in their thousands, 
and uh, we don't have enough, you know, day schools. That's why we have a school in, in Busia, but uh, 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 it has pupils from, uh, from Nyeri and from other uh, parts of the country. Right. So I don't think that will be effective, but it's a matter that's going to be, to be looked upon. Uh, but again, Jeff, when we talk about uh, 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 this unrest that's happening in schools, we should ask ourselves, why are these teenagers, because they are teenagers, mm. what is going in their mind? Who's taking of their psychological and mental uh, uh, you know, guidance? Mm. Because when we see these physical things and we act angrily over them, we should think beyond that mm -hmm. and look deeper into the issues that are affecting these, these, these pupils, these, these students who are rioting and causing all this damage. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it goes beyond just that act. It goes beyond that physical act, but it's also mentally uh, related. And it's an interesting angle you bring into that because uh, some quarters just talk about the fact that, oh, it's the examinations, the KCSC, but it shouldn't be normalized at the fact that every single year we'll have school unrest because of an exam that happens every year. But, Jeff, we, we all, in our time, we, we also had the exams. It's nothing new. It's not a surprise. It's, it's nothing new. But, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of, you know, politics that have been ingested in this mm -hmm. thing, yeah? Uh, owing to the fact there are people who are arguing that uh, the delocalization of teachers by mm -hmm. the TSC is also... the, the it could play a part. Yes, it's playing mm. part in this. Mm. So maybe the Ministry of Education should tell us exactly why are these unrests erupting. And you know, in, in, in some regions, let's say in the, in the Western and Nyanza regions, these cases have been, uh, you know, they, they can be accounted as 80% of right. all the unrest that have... Uh, uh, been reported right. throughout the, the last two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. So is, is this a trend? Is, is, is it a trend that can be tracked to something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should investigate that and come up with a solution as, as fast as possible. Absolutely. Yes. And even when we move on to the second page of uh, the People Daily, uh, it's the same story, right? They're just going more into detail about uh, scrapping the boarding facility over school unrest. This, of course, uh, coming from the PS, uh, of course, on this one, Belio Kipsang. But also, it also brings into question, because that's not the only thing that they'll have to look at, also the whole admission policy and mission systems of high schools as they get students into their schools is going to be an issue because now you actually need to get early a school that's close to where they live. Yes. So now that's a new aspect because before it really didn't matter where you live in this country. Yes, yes. If you're called to a certain school, whether it's in Yeri or where, you pack you up your go. bags and you go. Yes. But now the school that you're called to, if it's a day school, you're not going to look for a relative there if you don't have. Yes. There's a, there's, there's a lot that will have to be. Yes, that's why I was telling it, it's route. going to be a challenging uh, thing to implement mm -hmm. if the Ministry of Education uh, pushes through with this agenda. Mm -hmm. it, it, if it, it goes through, it will be a challenge to parents and to, to the students themselves because I don't see the viability of how I can. Uh, uh, be, be, be called to join a, a school in, 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 in let's say, uh, Tana River, and my home is in Nakuru, and, and it's, it's a, a day, day school. school. Exactly. Yeah, it, it doesn't make Before sense. Before that, it wouldn't have been an issue because you'd be yes. boarding there. Yes. But now, uh, lots of factors to consider before uh, they go into the whole admissions absolutely, process uh, absolutely. for high schools. Yes. So you can get that, of course, on the second uh, page of your People Daily. We now move on swiftly to page three. Always a favorite on page three. It's a wacky world every single time with Michael Moriah. On the third page, it's all about winning against all odds. When you feel like the odds are stacked against you and it can't really work well, Michael Moriah is giving you a sliver of hope because right in there, there's a chance for you to make wonders and make people wonder how you did it. And right there, there are a couple of amazing people who, against all odds, like they said, did exactly that. Shiro, there's one story I'm hoping you'll touch because... It's, it's, it's very funny. So, over to you. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Shiro Moriyoki back in the studio. All right, let's take a look at uh, your page three. Michael Moriah is carrying the corners of the internet to bring you just the weirdest things. And of course, like Jeff mentioned, one of the things uh, that people just bring joy is just victory against all odds. This is something that, um, you know, warms the heart in some cases. Like this seven-year-old girl, for instance, who won the Nicholas Maxim Special Award for Excellence in Manuscript Penmanship, which is a national award in the United States for beautiful handwriting in 2016. Now, the thing that makes her stand out is that she was born without hands, but somehow has mastered the, right of her, her, uh, the art of writing by holding her pencil in between the ends of her arms and, you know, but she could have used prosthetics, but she chose to practice use, using her own arms and got so good that she beat competitors who have both their hands and she won. 
And here's another story here. There's a Kenyan, because, you know, that's what we do. Uh, his name is Ibrahim Okonga Washira. He's a 27-year-old Kenyan marathon runner. He became an overnight sensation in Estonia after winning the 35th annual Tattoo Half Marathon, a 23-kilometer uh, race he ran in his socks. So basically, this is not what he planned to do. He, um, he arrived at the starting point with his shoes, gave them to someone for safekeeping, just could not get them before the starting whistle. So what did he do? He ran in his socks and he won. Gosh, wow. All right, let's take a look at this next one, which I'm sure is the one Jeff was referring to. A 20-year-old man from Russia made headlines after being declared the winner of a women's lingerie photo contest organized by a department store. So now this man, he, his name is Andre Nagorny. He had of the online photo contest and decided to take a few photos wearing women's lingerie before entering them into the contest just for fun. He expected to get a good laugh, but what he didn't expect was to be declared the winner. So they awarded him the title of Miss Avocado. <laughs> then they contacted him to schedule a professional photo shoot, learned he was actually a man. So, of course, they disqualified him and they said that he looked a lot like a girl. And so that's why he became Miss Avocado. That lots of people in this studio have strong feelings about avocado. Meanwhile, there's, we all have these people who come to your house and they take off your socks, their, their shoes, and then it's like the GSU has thrown tear gas into your living room, surely. Anyway, so this is a guy who won the Stinkiest Shoes Contest winner. So basically, an 11-year-old girl beats all competition to how he met the winner in the 2010 Order Eaters Rotten Sneaker Contest, which is a competition that seeks to crown the person with the stinkiest shoes in America, and she took home an equivalent of $250,000. Me, my thing is this, if at 11 your shoes are already winning prizes, how much they smell? What are you, when you get to the age of 18, Jeff, what is going to happen? Which story were you asking about? Was it Miss Avocado or the Stinky Socks? It was the Stinky Socks. Not Miss Avocado? Miss Avocado was like, okay, fine, I can see how that's working, but how do you actually paint an inspirational picture to the fact that I was 11 years old and my shoes were the stinkiest? In America. And despite all odds, I won. At 11? At 11. What <laughs> will your shoes be doing at 21? They'll be clearing cities. <laughs> anyway, Jeff, that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for that, Chiro. Of course, you can get uh, much more in your people daily. Uh, let's quickly move on uh, to the Daily Nation now. In the Daily Nation, uh, on the front page, you know, this handshake story, it's almost as if every so often we're given a small dose of uh, what was discussed, a small dose of uh, details to the agreement, and that's what's happening at this Friday as well. State of the Union revealed in doses. Uh, right in there, of course, uh, Raila Odinga's utterances when he was in Kitui opening um, a hotel on that side, and talking about the fact that um, he was telling the citizenry, you will also be asked on how you want to be governed, how we can improve devolution, um, how we distribute wealth in this country, um, the, the structure of the executive, mm -hmm. um, how you want that to be handled as well, whether you want a parliamentary system of government or for a high, uh, high hybrid one. So we can see that there was much more that was discussed in there. And of course, uh, before that, there had been plenty of talk about referendum. I don't know if this is what um, he was alluding to in his speech. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Raila is still pushing that agenda of having a referendum. Uh, in, in, in the back of, of, of his mind, he has this idea that a parliamentary system can work better uh, than uh, the, the, the current uh, mm -hmm. uh, presidential system. And, uh, you know, when, when leaders of this uh, caliber start talking like this, eh, it, it really makes influence into others. I saw an interview of a National Assembly Speaker, mm -hmm. Justin Muturi, or on, in, on, on some of the local TV stations, and he was of the same opinion that the parliamentary uh, system can be effective in Kenya than the current. So mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, it's a talk that's going to be picked as time goes by, uh -huh. and we are going to see uh, a lot of talk from uh, different quarters and from different politicians. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I think, Jeff, it's something that uh, we are going to be treated for the, for the next few years. Indeed. Yes, uh, before 2012, I think some, a lot of things will, will, will happen. Will before happen. 2022. Yes, Absolutely, yes. of course. Um, and we'll see how that uh, exactly plays out. Also on the front page, uh, Kidero uh, put on the spot over 1 billion shilling tax areas. Uh, this, of course, as uh, when he was at the helm of Mumia's Sugar. 
So it seems like um, not only had we discussed the fact that uh, even in Nairobi County government, there's a bit of um, impropriety in terms of how uh, the funds are managed there. Yes. And he was uh, the governor at the time, so yes. he'd have to answer some questions. But also, um, his uh, time at Mumia's Sugar has also been brought into question. Yes, he has a lot of questions to answer. Very true. Yes. Uh, let's move on to the standard. Another front page, it's one of the issues that uh, had been highly politicized and was really politically charged. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the lifestyle audit. Now, details have been revealed of this uh, secret lifestyle audit and it, that it is already in effect and that it's taking place. Um, a multi-agency team that reports directly to President Uhuru Kenyatta has begun vetting first group of public servants in an operation being executed stealthily. Now, they also go down to show um, how this uh, particular operation is working. Yes. Uh, you'll receive a call as one of the people. So if you're this uh, high-level public servant, you receive a call, uh, a driver will come and pick you up, uh, take you to an undisclosed location. Uh, once you're there, uh, you'll be asked to provide uh, information and data on what you're doing. Uh, then you're asked to state uh, what you own, and it's compared uh, with a file reported by the NIS. Really? If there's any discrepancy between what you've just said and what they have here, then my friend, you're not going to have it easy. <laughs> I think Jeff, this is going to be a very interesting. Uh, and and uh, finally, when, when the details are made public, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have this so and so, he or she owns this much. Mm -hmm. And this is how he, 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 he or she got the, his wealth. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to, to elicit a lot of public emotions because they, it goes down to the, you know, the normal mwananchi, right. the ordinary mwananchi down right. there. Because it's, it's their lives that are going to be uh, affected. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. So that, of course, uh, is a big story there. Also yesterday, uh, big stories uh, in the corridors of justice. Uh, Bowen and Keter, given another lease of life, they must be so happy. I'm telling you, because <laughs> very many people had discounted them and thought that after this case, the political uh, livelihoods down the drain. But, I mean, the court ruled in their favor and they'll be back in the running. I'm sure now, probably this time, they'll be spitting even more fire Maybe. than before. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Ketel, when speaking after that... Uh, uh, the, the ruling. The, yes, the ruling. Mm. Uh, he was very categorical. That, and he, he, he repeated, you know, he's been saying it that he's fighting a political war mm -hmm. because of what he stands for. <coughs> you know, we, we don't know whether it's the truth, but according to him, he, he seems like uh, there's, there's a war between him and, uh, you know, the, the people that we don't know he admits right. he's fighting mm -hmm. because of studying for the rights of his people, mm. you know, and his community. You know, when these things go this way, you know, politicians will always uh, bring in uh, the, the community thing. and Our uh, people. Yes, and our mm. people thing. But uh, they must be very relieved to, to have their, uh, their seats back. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. And mm. of course, we'll see, um, like you said, how they move from here, um, whether they'll uh, still stand for what they believe in or probably take a much more reserved uh, approach yes. once they get back into the House. Yes. And uh, maybe the challenger might go to the Supreme Court. We, we don't know. And maybe if, if they take that route, we don't know how is the mm -hmm. outcome is going mm -hmm. to be. Okay. So we'll wait and see how that particular uh, case unfolds. Uh, quickly, uh, we can uh, wrap things up with the star. On the front page, it's all about uh, the school unrest that's uh, been taking place. And because of that, uh, parents will pay for school fire damage. Uh, now, P.S. Belio Kipsang says government now encouraging mixed day and boarding school uh, model uh, to come into play on that particular issue. And this, of course, just trying to address uh, what we were talking about earlier, the fact that um, in some areas, it might not be possible to have a completely day yes. uh, type of uh, school model going on there. Yes. So because of that, once you have those who are coming from FARC and board, others can have a day school system just to try and alleviate what's going on because um, they're looking at the fact that probably it's more to do with the boarding uh, system that's going on. And of course, the school unrest, because we've seen a couple of uh, dormitories being uh, torched in, this, in, in these incidences, and that's what they're trying to address right it, now. Yes, and while at it, I think it, it would be prudent for, for maybe organizations or uh, government uh, organizations and uh, and uh, private organization and profit organization to talk to our our students because when 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 the government pulls itself out that we are not going to cater for these damages you are causing mm -hmm. it's going down to your parents it's going to cause a lot of distress these parents are struggling to pay for your school fees and uh, other necessities but we are there burning and, and, and inflicting more misery on their, on their lives. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we, we need a lot of counseling and guidance in our, in our teenagers. Very true. Yes. Uh, so um, just a, a raft of changes that will need to be taken into consideration with that. Also, of course, uh, the Obama homecoming, 
that is being now touted, of course, that he's coming home. Yeah. Uh, 400 strong delegation is supposed to come in. Um, his sister, Auma, actually addressed uh, the press talking about um, how they're going to be coming in, uh, what will be taking part, and everyone waiting and watching with bated breath. Yes, and uh, maybe some other people will be interested uh, of, the, of the members of his entourage mm -hmm. that uh, might include uh, Oprah Winfrey, that might include the uh, Akon, the, the artist. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, a cocktail of guests flocking this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's been reported he will he, have a 400 strong delegation to mm -hmm. Kenya and another 600 uh, waiting in Kogelo. So that makes a thousand maybe, <laughs> and now the public. It's going to be uh, a play of events in Quite Kogelo. Quite the Yes. Okay, uh, we'll leave uh, the newspaper review at that particular point. World Cup action. Who are you putting your money on as you go into Sunday's big one? Uh, I feel Croatia will disappoint France in a big way. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, my money is on, on Croatia on now. On Croatia? Yes. Okay, now you've decided to trick, <laughs> trick the winning team. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the winning team, Jay. Okay. Uh, uh, funnily enough, we are uh, reading from the same script because I have been supporting now Croatia. After my people were taken out, I looked for the next underdog. Yeah. And then they proved me wrong, that they really weren't underdogs. But your team is still in the World Cup. England is, is playing Belgium on Saturday. So Why has England become my team? <laughs> <You've dis> <laughs> <laughs> I told you, the press, just busy misquoting us and our people. Okay, uh, we'll leave the newspaper review at that particular point right here. Thank you so much, uh, Biggie, for taking us through the papers. Anytime. And of course, uh, right here, DJ, of course, Ace is going to be coming through and just lighting up wherever you are. It's going to be a litness fest uh, right here. But before all of that, let's look at what's coming up. Here are your highlights. Coming up. We chat about millennial tourism trends. We get up close and personal with actress Nice One Jerry. We hang out with DJ Ace. Also catch up with P-Unit, all this and more on Hangout Friday.